Here are five high-performance aircraft you probably never heard of. Number 1. The Arnold AR-5 was an incredible single-seater homebuilt. One glance, and you know this plane does one thing, and one thing very well. Go fast. The AR-5 was filmmaker Mike Arnold's personal project for a single-engine plane that could keep up with Vans RVs, but on a shoestring budget. That was the mission, but Arnold's perfectionism in details and self-acquired knowledge in composites made the AR-5 into something much more. Powered by a two-stroke Rodax 582 with only 60 horsepower, the AR-5 flew to a record-breaking 213 miles per hour, leaving some vans homebuilts in the dust. What's more, Arnold had no aeronautical background, was self-taught. And even then, the AR-5 somehow beat out the P-51's drag coefficiency. Other pilots and builders marveled at the slick plane, even looking around his garage to searching for a wind tunnel, and finding none. Arnold bravely let the AR-5 loose with several magazine editors and all gushed at well harmonized the plane was, among the best of the best of all homebuilds they've flown. All this from a personal ride intended for light aerobatics and the occasional $100 hamburger. Arnold considered selling the plane in kit form, after all, the little plane was well publicized and honored with several cover shots on kit planes. But fearing a ham-fisted homebuilder would eventually spin one into the ground, Arnold kept the plane to himself, and later sold the AR-5 on the condition it would be permanently moved to a museum. And that's what happened, the AR-5 hangs prominently from the ceiling at the Hiller Aviation Museum near San Francisco, California. Number 2. When we think of composite airplanes, the Cirrus immediately comes to mind as they've cornered the market in high-performance singles. But back in 1969, the Windecker Eagle broke the mold, and was in fact the very first composite aircraft certified by the FAA. This in an era when Piper, Cessna and Beach were pumping out thousands of aluminum aircraft. The Eagle was designed by a dentist, who was underwhelmed with the current offerings in the market, and desired something much faster and sexier. And sexier it sure was, there really was nothing else quite like it in 1969. As one writer put it, the Eagle was slicker than a banana peel and performed accordingly. The prototype was designed with fixed landing gear, just like the Cirrus are today. But a company board member demanded retractable gear, which added complexity and weight, as the landing gear was overbuilt for the design. Development costs ballooned. Then came FAA certification of the novel aircraft, albeit at a very high price. $20 million, which would be roughly $100 million today. As was the case with the Starship many years later, the Eagle was strengthened about 20% beyond original plans in order to satisfy FAA requirements. To make matters worse, a company test pilot had to bail out during a spin test, in front of FAA inspectors. Only seven units of the slick aircraft were produced, and the company ran out of funds. The type certificate was picked up by a Chinese entrepreneur a few years ago with plans to continue production in China, and market the Eagle in China and US. With Cirrus domination in the same segment, that is a very tall order indeed. Number 3. To the untrained eye, this little homebuilt could pass as some variant of a Vans RV, or perhaps a mini Mustang. This is the one and only American electric piranha. With only 180 horsepower, its performance is mind-blowing. But even more mind-blowing is the story behind this little plane. We travel back to the mid-1960s. Vietnam is raging and the Air Force is looking at options to replace its aging fleet of AC-47 spooky gunships. Enter Project Little Brother. 
This consisted of multiple tiny ground attack planes that would swarm and obliterate enemy targets. The tiny aircraft in question was the Piranha. Designed by Milt Blair, the Piranha was based on the Cosmic Wind, a late 1940s racing plane designed by Lockheed employees. The tiny Piranha had a vicious bite. Four unguided rockets were housed in two wingtips plus a 500-pound bomb was carried on a belly hard point. A total of six piranhas were built. The Air Force found the piranha extremely difficult to fly and shuddered at the thought of sacrificing pilots in training in the death trap. Ultimately, the project died when C-130s were converted to Spectre gunships, so the piranha was no longer needed anyways. The Air Force destroyed five piranhas, but one remained in private hands, and that aircraft was bought by Bud Pinkston, who swiped it from a terrified F-15 pilot, who nearly totaled the piranha on takeoff. Bud's piranha has been modded to 210 horsepower. With this setup, it can cruise at an easy 260 miles per hour. On the flip side, stall speed is 130 miles per hour. Approaches are conducted at 200 miles per hour in pattern and 160 miles per hour over the numbers. To maintain controllability, fuel has to be switched every 15 minutes. Full ailerons grant a roll rate of 720 degrees per second. Bud added some mods to clean up the aircraft, helping improve top speed and lower fuel burn. Bud flies the Piranha frequently and has put in more than 2,500 hours. Now that's a Piranha that moves. And by now, Bud is probably getting the hang of flying it too. Number 5. If Darth Vader owned a plane, he'd probably choose the next. The next hails from Italy, with lines somewhat reminiscent of the early 1980s Lamborghini Countach. Legally an ultralight in Europe, and soon available in LSA version in the US. Aero and Tech is a division of Morelli Group, a company with sheet metal expertise. And it shows on the next. Also similar to the Lamborghini, pilots enter via gull doors. The aluminum space frame is based on Formula One construction techniques. Another parallel you could draw is with the F-117 including multi-facet fuselage panels. The black paint adds the finishing touch to the stealthy design. Powered by a Rotax 912, the next cruises at about 150 miles per hour with a 1,400 feet per minute climb. With foldable wings, you can cruise with next down the road when you're tired of cruising in the sky. So far, only one has been produced, listed price is $77,000, not bad for a stealthy looking high performance sport plane. Number 5. Back in the 1970s, if you wanted a fast single engine aircraft, you'd turn to the Cessna 210, Beechcraft Bonanza, a Mooney or Piper Comanche. But, there was always that one pilot who needed much more. Enter the Balanca Skyrocket II, a high-performance single that promised to blow the doors off anything that had been built before it. The name Skyrocket was fitting, as this was as slick as a bullet. Its picture-perfect nose carried a monstrous geared Continental with 435 horsepower. It's worth mentioning that most six-cylinder Continentals in their basic form produce 285 to 300 horsepower. But key to the Skyrocket's performance wasn't power alone, but rather an extremely slick composite fuselage and laminar flow wings. Laminar flow wings trace their roots to World War II and the NACA-6 airfoil. Though it was used successfully with the P-51, no one in the general aviation world would touch it, as it required an impossibly smooth surface to work, meaning no rivets, hinges or fuel caps. Legendary designer Giuseppe Balanca and his son August aimed to change status quo and started work on the Skyrocket II in the mid-1950s. Development was long, 
and delayed with the death of Giuseppe in 1970. Facing bankruptcy, August partnered with an investor, and the Skyrocket II finally took flight in 1975. Sure enough, it blew everyone away. NASA, who had cautioned about the use of laminar flow wings all along, commissioned the prototype to test it out for themselves and found the aircraft to be perfectly flawless. As to real performance numbers, all testing was highly secretive but some conservative numbers were released. 300 mile per hour maximum speed, 250 mile per hour cruise at 65% power, 1,900 feet per minute climb, and 1,500 mile range. There are plenty of aircraft that can match or beat this today. But this was back in 1975, and this was a six-seater aircraft. Not a two-seat home-built. Sadly, at the peak of its development in the early 1980s, came the downturn in the general aviation market and it was impossible to market a plane that was impossibly complex as this one. The Skyrocket II is now permanently displayed at the Balanca Airfield Museum in Wilmington,